Good morning and welcome to Tech 240 for Wednesday, January 27th. The topic for today's session is going to be power and energy in electrical circuits. And we'll get to that in a minute, but I do think that you'll find that it's fairly simple and straightforward, especially compared to what we talked about last time, which was circuit analysis with KVL and KCL. So we'll get to power and energy in just a little bit, but I think maybe the best way to start out today's session is with an example problem, uh, maybe a little bit of review. So let's go ahead and do that. And to do that, I'm gonna switch over to the document camera. Okay, here is an example problem. And I went ahead and wrote it out on this paper ahead of time, just to save some time. But uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and pause the video and copy this down and then attempt to solve it. That would actually be a great exercise if you go ahead and attempt to solve it and pause the video. And then after you've solved it, then come back and unpause the video and then listen to the explanation of it, all right? So I will assume that you have done that now and you have given this a shot and you've tried to solve it yourself. So uh, I'll step you through it now. So I would say that the first thing that you should do is look at this and say, can I solve this with the method of combining resistances and find an R total and then work your way back and find an I total and then all the component current flows and voltage drops. And the answer here is no, because you've only, you've only got these two resistors and you cannot say that these resistors are in series because the current going through here does not necessarily equal the current going through here. We don't even know which way this current is gonna be going. There's a battery trying to push it this way. Doesn't necessarily mean the current is gonna go this way, but we'll, we'll see. We don't even know which way this current's going. Uh, and so we certainly can't say that whatever current goes through here equals the current go through here because you got this, this source over here as well. They're not in parallel either because uh, in parallel, you would say that the tips and the tails of the resistors are connected, all right? So the tips may be connected here. That's directly connected to this, but the tails, this is not directly connected to that because we have a voltage supply in the middle of that. So we can't say that they are in parallel either. So they're not in series, they're not in parallel. We can't combine them. So we have to use some other tool. Voltage divider doesn't work because they're not in series. Ohm's law is not helpful yet because I don't have enough information to solve. So it looks like our only tools left are KVL and KCL. So for KVL and KCL, we need to make sure everything is labeled. Pretty much everything is labeled. Um, you know, if we wanted to, I guess we could call this V sub L. Maybe we'll use that in an equation. And we could call this V sub R for left and right. And the only thing left is our assumed current directions. Remember, you have to draw these arrows in in order to write the equations for KVL or KCL, either one. So I'm going to assume arbitrarily, just my best guess right now, I think probably current is going to be going down through resistor 1 and probably from right to left in resistor two. So this is I2 and this is I1. Those are my best guesses, but I might be wrong. No big deal either way. So now I need to find loops or nodes where I have one unknown voltage source for a loop or one unknown current flow for the nodes into or out of a node. All right, so I'm looking around. I really only have um, a couple of nodes and only a couple of different possibilities for loops. This is really not a terribly difficult problem, but that's okay. It's, it's good practice. And so I like to think about what do I know? What do I not know? Well, I know the voltage of this source. I know the voltage of this source. So this is known, this is known. This is an unknown and this is an unknown. So I need to make a loop with one unknown voltage source or a node with one unknown current flow. So I actually have, I have, uh, I can see at least two different ways I could do this, that I could start this problem out. 
But I think probably the easiest way to start this problem out is to make a loop right here. The left loop, because I have one known voltage source and one unknown voltage drop. So I'm going to do a KVL equation for the left loop. And like I have said last time, I prefer to write equations with the direction of assumed current flow as much as possible because you add the voltage drops. It just makes the equations easier. So I think I'm going to go clockwise from A. I'm going to go clockwise. And I'm going to start from A. So I start from A, I go clockwise. I'm going to go through here. And when I go through here, I go with the direction of assumed current flow. So I write V1. And then I keep going clockwise and I get to my first sign of my voltage source and it's minus. So I write minus. I like to put them in variables first and then I'll plug in numbers. Minus V sub L. And then I keep going, I get back to where I started, so I set it equal to zero. Now I plug in numbers, and I know that V sub L is 12 volts. So V1 minus 12 volts equals zero. Now I add 12 volts to both sides, and I find that V1 equals 12 volts. Great. All right, and now, I'm going to pause from doing KVL and KCL because I know V1 and I know R1, so I can find I1. I1 equals V1 divided by R1. That's Ohm's law. And that's 12 volts divided by 10 ohms. So divided by 10 is easy. I just move the decimal point one place to the left, and I get I1 equals 1.2 amps. So I can write that in for I1. Okay, so I could also write this up here if I want to. All right, so now I know everything there is to know about this and this and this, and I only have one unknown left, and that's this. So I could actually write a KVL equation in at least two different ways. I could write a KVL equation for this loop, or I could write a KVL equation for the whole outside loop. And either way should come out with the exact same answer. So um, it doesn't matter uh, which way I do it. Um, maybe what I'll do, I'll tell you what it would look like if you wrote the equation for the entire outside loop, and then I'll actually write the equation for just the right loop, all right? So if I was gonna write this equation for the entire outside loop, I'd probably go with the direction of assumed current flow. So I, maybe I'd start from B and I'd go counterclockwise. So I'd have V2 and then I'd have plus V sub L because I came to plus sign first. So V2 plus V sub L minus V sub R because I came to the minus sign first. Minus V sub R equals zero. So V2 plus V sub L minus V sub R equals zero. I know VL, I know VR, so I just solve for V2. So that's how you could write it. But I'm going to do it just with the right loop. KVL, right loop. And I'm going to go counterclockwise to go with the direction of assumed current flow. But try it the other way, and you should get the exact same answer. All right, so I'm going to start from B, and I'm going with the direction of assumed current flow through resistor 2, so I'm going to write V2, and then I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to go with the direction of assumed current flow through resistor 1, so I write plus V1, and then I keep going, and I come to the minus sign first, so I write minus VR, and then I come back to where I started from, and so I set it equal to 0. Now I put in values, because I know V1 and VR. So V1 was 12 volts. VR was 20 volts. And now I'm going to add 20 volts to both sides and subtract 12 volts from both sides. So 
Uh, I'll, I'll write it out. I, I could skip this step, but I'll, I'll write it out. So I'm adding 20 volts to both sides, and then I'm subtracting 12 volts to both sides. So these will cancel out. And so I'm left with 20 minus 12 is 8 volts. So V2 is 8 volts. And now I can use Ohm's law to find I2. I2 equals V2 divided by R2. V2 is 8 volts. R2 was 20 ohms. And that makes I2 8 divided by 20 is 0 0.4. 0 0.4 amps. All right, so we're almost done. Just these last voltages at the nodes to fill in. So uh, first of all, look where your ground is. So that's the symbol for ground. Ground means it's at zero volts. So C is direct, node C is directly connected to ground. That would be true if C was over here or over here or right there or any of these places down here. This is all the same node, it's all the same voltage. So V at C is zero volts. Now, what we try to find is the easiest way to find the voltage at node A and node B. So, I'm going to go from ground, trying to find my uh, multimeter probes. These will have to suffice. So, here's the black probe, here's the red probe. So, the voltage at B means the black probe is here at ground and my red probe is here at B. So what is the voltage that I read right here? So you start from ground and you take the easiest way to get up to B. So here's ground. The easiest way is to go through this voltage source. So as I'm going up to B, I gain, when I go from negative to positive, I gain VR, which is 20 volts. So from here to here, I gain 20 volts. And this is at the same voltage as B is at because there's just a wire connecting them. So this is all at the same voltage which is the voltage at B. So from here up to B, I gained 20 volts. So the voltage at B must be 20 volts. All right, but let me show you one more way of doing it. Uh, if you didn't want to or didn't see that route, you could take this route. This is just a little more complicated. I'm gonna go from C through this resistor and through this resistor to get to B, all right? So what's V1 and what's V2? All right, so V1 was 12 volts. All right, so from here to here, with the direction of current flow, I dropped 12 volts. That's what V1 means. The voltage drop across resistor one is 12 volts. That means from here to here, with the direction of current flow, from here to here, I dropped 12 volts. So if I drop 12 volts from here to here, and this is at zero volts, that means this must have been at 12, right? This must be at 12 so that I can drop 12 volts and be at zero here, right? So the voltage here must be 12 volts, all right? So it's 12 volts here. And if it's 12 volts there, then it must be 12 volts all over this top part because it's just a wire connecting them. So I'm at 12 volts all along here. So I'm at 12 volts here. And now what was V2? V2 was eight volts. That means that from here to here in the direction of current, assumed current flow with the arrow, in the direction of the arrow, I dropped this value, which was eight volts. So from here to here, I dropped eight volts. So if I'm at 12 volts here, and I dropped eight volts from here to here, then what must my voltage be right here? It must be 12 plus eight, which is 20. All right, and that's what we got before. All right, so there's, there's different ways of doing it. I mean, we could do a, a third way, um, but uh, you should be able to get the exact same answer either way you do it, or any way you do it. Last one is the voltage at node A. So the easy way of doing it is to go through this route and to see that, all right, this is all at zero volts. And then from here to here, I gained 12 volts. So this is at 12 volts and this is all just connected with wire. So this is all really node A, and it's all at 12 volts, all right? There's another way of doing it. If you didn't have that, didn't want to use that, and that would be to use the voltage drop across resistor one. And like I kind of said this before, but if this is at zero volts, and it is because it's connected to ground, if this is at zero volts, and I know that 
with the direction of the arrow, I drop this amount of voltage. That means from here to here, I drop 12 volts. So if that's zero, and I dropped 12 from here to here, then I must be at 12 volts right here. Okay, so this whole area is at 12 volts. All right, so either way, you can find that voltage at A is 12 volts. All right, so that wasn't a particularly difficult um, circuit calculation problem, but it's a good it's a good practice, you know. And if you can do this one, then you can probably do more challenging ones. So it's it's good practice, even though it was you know, there was only there were only two components, so it wasn't a particularly long problem, but good practice nevertheless. Uh, I think I'll stop this video here, and in the next video we will talk about power dissipation and energy dissipation in electric circuits. So I'll see you in the next video.